Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Gabriella. I make videos about fragrance, astrology, self-care, mental health, dating, life in LA. I do vlogs and basically whatever else I feel like talking about. So if that sounds like your jam, please stick around. I would love to have you here. Today's video, I'm like, I can't even talk at a normal pace. I am kind of, the closest word I can use to describe it is starstruck. Um, for the first time ever on my channel, I'm gonna be reviewing Roja perfumes. Roja is like next level luxury niche perfume. I have known about Roja fragrances for many, many years now. Because anytime I go into any special perfume shop here in LA, I see the fragrances. They're stunning. The bottles are gorgeous. But somewhere along my fragrance journey, I became aware of the price of Roja perfumes, and they are luxury niche perfumes and I just stayed away because I was afraid I would fall in love and I just knew that those were just not in my budget so I didn't expect to have any Roger fragrances for a very long time and then I got an email <laughs> or a DM from a representative from Roja saying that they really liked my content and they wanted to send me some fragrances I was expecting two I already was like what is happening I had that imposter syndrome thing, and then they sent me five. Five. So this video is not sponsored. They didn't give me any money or make me promise to review the fragrances. None of that. It was just, we want to send you the fragrances and see what you think. And I am just uh, really over the moon. So I want to dive right in and get into this. I have five fragrances from the new Roja Essence de Parfum collection for women. These bottles, y'all, I can't... I took a heavy amount of notes on these fragrances to make sure that I get everything in there that I want to say. So let's jump straight in, you guys. Shout out to Roja. Thank you so much for your mind-blowing generosity and including me in the people able to try your new collection. I appreciate it so much, and you really made my entire month. All right, so the first one I have here is Reckless. How gorgeous are these bottles? So one thing I love about Roja that I've always noticed is the names are so... Every one of the names of the fragrances evokes a really, really visceral kind of pinpointed feeling. The names are chosen very, very well. And I mean, if you look at any of the Roja fragrances, they have so many. They all just have a name that really evokes something. So yes, this one's called Reckless and the bottles have Roja Doves signature on the top and right here who is the nose behind this brand this to me when i smelled this one even before i put it on my skin i was like oh they listened to me when i told them before they sent some fragrances i told them the notes that i like and i said that i love love neroli orange blossom it's probably my favorite smell in the whole world so when they describe reckless the quote that they use is adventure awaits the notes of reckless are bergamot mandarin and orange rose de may neroli jasmine geranium coriander pink pepper cinnamon sandalwood benzoin vanilla styrax and musk so when i first smell this i smell sweet orange i don't smell that um bitter bergamot heavy type of orange even though bergamot is on the top i smell sweet orange i think it's the mandarin and the orange it's really really bright and juicy orange that's what i smell right off the bat when i spray this um and then um, almost immediately after i get really really sunny neroli it's not too sharp of neroli it's not too green uh, it's not that sporty neroli. I don't know if that makes sense, but sometimes neroli can smell really, really sporty, almost like a clean body wash or something. Uh, it's not that. It's really, really just sunny and cheery, but not too sharp. To me, this is the most elegant, sexy version of a creamy dreamsicle. You know, those, those orange popsicles with cream. It's really, really, really delicious then it starts for me to get a little bit herbaceous the geranium adds a really really nice green note there's something fresh and clean about it which i think pairs very very well with the neroli because neroli to me always almost always smells very very clean and i wouldn't call it green but it's almost on that that biting level of you know geranium um maybe even sort of vetiver like it's it can be super green 
I do think that the spices in this really ground the neroli. I wouldn't call this a spicy fragrance, but it does have spice in it, and I think it balances out that cheery, happy, zesty orange and neroli. It grounds the neroli. It's not just this heady kind of floral citrus. And then on the skin, when it really dries down, to me, it's not, it, it smells like a sensuous, full bloom garden after the rain. Now, as far as I know, there are no aquatic notes, and I'm not saying that this really smells like rain, but there's something about it that is fresh, and you know how after it rains in a garden, everything is amplified, and that's what I get from this. It's warm, but simultaneously very clean and fresh. To me, smelling this, the vibe is Tuscany. The vibe is a, a wedding in Tuscany. It's a summer night, but it's not too hot. I wouldn't want to wear this on a night when it's really, really muggy. I pretty much stay away from white floral heavy fragrances when it's that hot, but this is beautiful Tuscany. It reminds me of the movie La Piscine, if any of you have seen that. It's a beautiful movie, and that's in France, I believe. I think so, but it's... It's just gorgeous. I imagine being in a villa and or, or maybe a citrus grove in Tuscany and having brunch or an early dinner and cocktails while the sun sets. Maybe wine and a charcuterie board. A silk wrap slip dress, maybe in a nude color, champagne color, maybe like this. There, there's a very gentle breeze through the air and it's blowing orange blossom and bloom through the air. This is also giving the vibe of at a wedding, maybe you meet somebody there and, and you sneak off to go kiss them during the, during the reception behind one of the old walls of the villa that you're at. You're wearing strappy sandals and the temperature is just perfectly comfortable and you feel elegant and free and this unbridled feminine summer energy and I think reckless is a perfect thing to call it because I just imagine hair down, flowy outfit, running around, laughing, again, meeting that person at the wedding, meeting that stranger, kissing a stranger. That's what Reckless is. So I really, really love this fragrance. I think this is probably maybe my number two favorite. I don't know. I think I have a tie, but that is Reckless. If you love Neroli like me, you got to check this one out. Okay, next we have 51, which I, I think this one might be my favorite. It's really a tie between this and Reckless. This is called 51 because the Roja flagship store is at 51 Burlington Arcade in Mayfair in London. And the quote, oh my gosh, the quote that they give for this fragrance on their website is the epitome of elegance. And I really could not disagree. Uh, so here are the notes. We have bergamot, lily of the valley, rose de may, gardenia, ylang ylang, jasmine, tuberose, lily, and raspberry. So we have so many of the most iconic florals, iconic white florals especially. Violet leaves, aniseed, cinnamon, clove, patchouli, cashmere wood, sandalwood, benzoin, vanilla, and orris. So right off the bat when I spray this, I smell spicy, actually. And it's that true orange peel bergamot. Sometimes when, I mean, bergamot is in so many fragrances and sometimes I admit I can't really smell it, but this I can smell, it's almost earthy, not in a dirty way, but it is not like we were talking about with Reckless, juicy, you know, dripping down your chin orange. It is the orange peel. So it's citrusy, but not sweet, juicy, anything like that. For me, this is a cooler weather fragrance. The raspberry is so, so pleasant in this. It's not a tart raspberry. It is so beautiful with that background of white floral. It reminds me of those candies, and I can't remember what they were called, but they were big when I was a kid. They were cream, I think Werther's made them, but they were cre raspberry and cream, like not lozenges, but you would suck on them, that type of hard candy. And this is what that reminds me of, and it just, brings back so many memories, but seriously, like, it smells so much like that. It smells like the adult expensive version of that candy. And I loved that combination. It actually works so well. This is so, yeah, this is actually my favorite, definitely. There are no sharp edges in this fragrance. That's one thing that I noticed, is that even with all the white floral, none of it is screechy, none of it is headache inducing. To me, it's all soft focus. Not in its strength, but more, it just is not, it's not aggressive. It's so warm and voluptuous. 
To me, this is the rich single aunt living her best life. This is almost modern day Samantha Jones type of energy. Just a powerful, sensual woman who it really marries sensuality and strength. I love that because I think you don't have to add, for example, oud or, or anything kind of loud and traditionally almost leaning masculine to be strong. It is an empowering female fragrance because it's like, yes, this is a strong fragrance and we've got so much floral in here and juicy fruit and vanilla and yet this is powerful because those typical female fragrances can be powerful. You don't need to borrow from the boys to be strong. This sits on me pretty close to the skin although the fragrance is bold and totally unique. It's not very very loud. I think experienced close to the skin it's I'm wearing it here so beautiful and it smells so natural at least on me it smells like I was born to wear this this reminds me of metropolitan elegance this is a power suit and heels Christian Louboutins doing your business around the city and you've got cocktails later and you've got men on your tail but you're like whatever I have things to do this is so powerful this is exactly how I like to smell when I need to feel powerful. So if auditions were open, I would wear this going into auditions, a night out. I mean, this is for me really, really dynamic and really, really flexible in terms of the context in which you can wear it. And yeah, this is definitely my favorite of the ones that I was sent. This is 51. Next we have Elixir, which is in a little bit of a different bottle. How pretty is that? We still got the, uh, the autograph signature right there. It reminds me of a champagne diamond. I think that that's what they call them. So the quote on Roja's website to describe this is sensual seduction. Sensual seduction. So this is described as a floral oriental and the notes are bergamot, lily of the valley, geranium, rose de may, jasmine de grasse, uh, so jasmine, ylang ylang, heliotrope, violet, raspberry, and peach. Violet leaves, cinnamon, cedar wood, cashmere wood, sandalwood, vanilla, oris, sorced, oris, ambrette, and musk. So right off the bat, this is a heady floral. I described it. And I smell the actual petals of white floral. Um, so I can't describe, it's just that, that feeling of when you smell the petals of a flower. So saying powdery is not accurate. Uh, although this is a bit powdery because we have violet in there and some of those white florals can pull kind of powdery, but I don't mean baby powder. It's not a, it's not a wet or screechy scent. It's powdery and sort of soft and enveloping. And that's what I get from the white florals in this. Uh, it's a little bit lipsticky to me, not in terms of, for example, like an iris fragrance that is really waxy, but there's something about it. This smells like what an older lipstick, maybe it reminds me of Estee Lauder lipsticks that my mom used to wear in the 90s. I think it was Estee Lauder that smelled a little bit like this. It was, I think it's the fruit that does that, um, that that's giving me that sensation. And then I think the violet and that the powderiness of the white florals gives me that cosmetic type of fragrance and I absolutely love that. Now, some people might not smell that at all. I'm just like kind of attuned to that because I love cosmetic fragrances. To me, this is the most positive and cheery of all of the fragrances, which I, I remember because it comes in this bottle and it's a lighter, more, it gives me the energy of champagne. Similar to, I always talk about uh, Lalique Rêve d'Enfini. Also the uh, Tom Ford peach fragrance. Uh, Baiser Volé by Cartier, that definitely the energy of Lalique Rêve d'Enfini. But the other ones that I mentioned, you might want to try this if you like those. There's something sparkly and juicy and really positive and uplifting about this fragrance. The fruit really shines through on here, which makes it, that, that's I think what makes it smell so cheery to me. But it's not distinguishable like, like the Tom Ford peach one. You're not gonna smell like a peach ring or anything like that. But there's a specific vibe when peach is used in fragrance. It's almost like a juicier version of when apple is used. To me, apple can smell a lot like shampoo and this smells like an elevated, more uh, salon level version of very expensive shampoo. I would love to have hair care products with this fragrance, oh my gosh. You will smell so clean and feminine. This isn't a typical sensual fragrance to me, 
when I wear sensual fragrances it's, fragrances, it's usually a gourmand, something a little smoky, something a little dark. This is seduction without sexual implication, if that makes sense. This is seducing someone with your smile, with your sense of humor, with your laugh. This isn't about making little jokes that make them think of something erotic or flirting with them or you know giving cheap compliments. This is seducing someone genuinely because you have a this addictive warm personality that people want to be around. I think this would be great for warmer weather. I think this is really really wedding appropriate depending on what kind of bride you are. If you're doing the super sexy sultry thing, no, but if you are, you know, bubbly and you want, you know, some of your wedding photos to be you and your partner like running and looking at each other and the veil is flying in the wind. That's what this is to me. This is happy bride or happy wedding. It reminds me a lot of the mom from Parent Trap. It's one of my favorite movies as a kid. The mom from Parent Trap and there's also a scene in Parent Trap where um, one of the girls, one of Lindsay Lohan, I can't remember if it was Callie, but she goes to her mom's wedding shop. Her mom owns a, a bridal, she's a bridal designer in London, and they have a photo shoot, and she gets to help her mom out on the photo shoot, and there's a bride, and I will always remember this, because ever since I was probably four, I was like, I, I love this. There's a bride, and she's wearing a white top hat with a veil. And it's just playful and beautiful and that 90s like elegance. It reminds me of all those photo shoots back then when models used to smile. Remember when models used to smile and they used to be like laughing and throwing their head back and it would be beautiful black and white photos or just like living their best lives. And that's what this is to me. All right, next we have Creation E, also known as Enigma. And the quote that they put on their website to go with this is, unravel the mystery. It's described as an oriental fragrance. Uh, the notes are bergamot, geranium, rose de may, neroli, jasmine, ylang ylang, heliotrope, peach, patchouli, sandalwood, vanilla, orris, ambergris, and musk. It's so funny, smelling it in the bottle is really not the same. I did wear tests and took notes on all of these. So when I first sprayed this, I got bergamot bitter, like really, really bitter, almost like vetiver, cutting, green and biting. And I think that that's also the geranium in there that is sort of that herbaceous, cheery, earthy. So it's not like dirty patchouli or dirty, like anything like that when I say earthy. It's just, it smells natural and it's quite bitter. I was like, oh, okay. Then it starts to go powdery sweet for me. The peach is not sparkly, girly, juicy peach uh, that we've that I've talked about in some of the previous fragrances. It just gives that really clean smell. It's almost like a white peach kind of reminds me of. Um, and that warm vanilla base with the peach just makes it smell warm but very, very clean. This is a really, really clean one. This is also kind of shampoo-y if you're into that type of fragrance. Then it started to get kind of resinous and woody, like sweet wood. Um, I used to live in, in a, basically a cabin with my mom for a while at a certain age when we lived in this one town in Illinois for a couple years or a year and it just smells like how it would smell going home to that. There was always this smell of sweet resinous wood and that's what it reminds me of. But nothing masculine, heavy, aggressive. There's nothing, nothing aggressive about this one either. Um, I think the most cutting part of all of this is the green, the, the bergamot and the geranium. The wood is not is not gonna like kick you in the face. The patchouli isn't crazy in here at all. If you don't like patchouli, I don't think you will still have a problem with this because to me it's really, really not patchouli heavy. It's really lovely, it's quite sunny because there's the neroli and the heliotrope in there which always kind of smell like almost vacation flowers to me, but I don't get a headache from this. None of these, which is amazing because I do love a white floral, but I frequently get headaches from white florals. I think often I get headaches from like gardenia, which isn't in here, but it's in some of the other fragrances and it's, I think when gardenia is too heavy, that's what does it for me. But this, having the fruit and the warmth in, in most of these fragrances to balance it out, I think that's really the key for me because no headache with this. It's so, so balanced and it is mysterious because you can't put your finger on what kind of fragrance this is. That's why Creation E, also known as Enigma, it's totally an enigma because you're like, I want to say it's a floral, but it's not because 
it's really juicy too, but it's not fruity because the floral is in there and it's really warm, but it's also wood. But also at the top, I got bitter green. It really has a little bit of everything and it transforms. And by the end of the dry down on the skin, there's no bitterness left at all. It, I only like right when I sprayed it, do I get that sort of bergamot and geranium kind of like, like kind of wake you up type of thing. On the skin, it's, it's no longer bitter at all. I smell the ylang ylang a lot more and I just smell clean, fresh out of the shower on a summer day. Not only summer though, I think this could be worn all through the year. I can also imagine it's giving me sunny winter day vibes. It reminds me of Audrey Hepburn in the movie Charade, if you've ever seen that. One of the scenes, the first scene I think we see her in is at a ski resort and she looks so cute, but it's a sunny day and she's sitting outside. And for some reason, that's what I would wear uh, if I went to a fancy ski resort and I was having my coffee outside in the morning. That's what I would wear. And her style throughout the whole movie, she's just so cheeky and cute in that movie. And it's also mysterious though. It's a great movie, you guys should watch it. But this is like so special because it is so mysterious and you just have to submit to it being an enigma. All right, and the last fragrance we have is Danger. So the quote that goes along with this is, you have been warned. The notes are lemon, bergamot, grapefruit, mandarin, rose de may, gardenia, jasmine, ylang ylang, violet, peach, clove, patchouli, sandalwood, vanilla, tonka, orris, and musk. This to me is by far the most retro smelling, the most vintage smelling of all the fragrances. If you like Chanel fragrance and that type, if you like Guerlain, if you like, um, oh my gosh, you know what? I just realized this reminds me so much of Samsara by Guerlain. So if you like Chanel and Guerlain fragrances, you're going to love this. Danger. I expected it to smell almost Carolina Herrera good girl or something like that. And it's not like that at all. So, so upon smelling it, I was like, oh, this is kind of retro. This is kind of a, a, a nod to like older fragrance and I get a lot of violet which is which I love because you guys know I love Insolence by Guerlain it's powdery but this is a really bold this is a louder bolder sexier violet than Insolence especially because the Insolence that I have is the Eau de Toilette so it's gentle and it's it really centers on the violet and this is more complex this is also fruity again we have peach um, then it started to get bold I started to smell the white flower petals more. It has this sort of in your face jumping out at you because I think I mentioned this, but the top is lemon, bergamot, grapefruit, and mandarin. So we have some bitter citrus. It's not juicy citrus, it's quite bitter. And that kind of jumps out at you. It's, it's really, really unique with the white florals, but then especially that lemon. This is not a demure fragrance. This is not a demure, gentle little white floral, like a Gucci bloom. Um, it, you know, not that that's really demure, but that's not dangerous. This is dangerous. This fragrance is mature. It's for a mature person, uh, emotionally. I don't mean in age, but just a, a, per, a, a woman settled in who she is. She doesn't put up fronts. She is unapologetically herself. She is at times brutal when it comes to her boundaries or cutting people off or not being interested in, in suitors. She knows what she wants and goes after it. She does not play games and you shouldn't play games with her. She is in control at all times. This is something I would wear if I worked at Vogue. I thought of Devil Wears Prada. I thought of Meryl Streep's character in Devil Wears Prada. It's just so classic. It smells so expensive, but there is something dangerous about it and it's not subtle. There is something brutal about it because of those citrus notes that's like, dang, okay, all right, wow. It's almost like a little smack in the face. Like, hey, I'm talking to you. It's the 90s diva, the 90s supermodel, Christy Turlington, those like how, they would just have the sharpest bone structure and just stare down that camera. It's all of the 90s goddesses. Uh, Charlize Theron, Sharon Stone, Catherine Zeta-Jones. It's the Bond girl that turns to be the villain at the end of the movie. It's classic dangerous, retro, femme fatale so it's not gonna be anything erotic and syrupy and drippy and like really suggestive you know there are some fragrances that it's basically like 
you know, you're wearing a bra and a thong in that fragrance, which can be really fun. I have a lot of those fragrances, but this is not that. This is elegant dress, you know, with tasteful, expensive jewelry, probably an updo, and just piercing eyes across the casino or something that are like, yeah, you know you wanna come talk to me, but you also know the minute you talk to me, your life as you know it is over. Ooh, it's ferocious. That's danger. And again, I'm gonna say, if you like Samsara by Guerlain, this is really, really similar. You, there's no way that you won't like this. So check it out, that is danger. And those are all of the Roja fragrances that I have to review for you today. That was really fun. Thank you so much to Roja again for your generosity. Seriously, you made me feel so special and I am just a little bit starstruck. And I'm really grateful to be able to try these fragrances. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll leave all of the info down below, all the titles of what I reviewed, and I will talk to you in my next one. Love you guys so much. Mwah. Bye guys.